This is a 3D printed servo motor that I designed and built from scratch. It can run in position control mode and utilizes PCB stators combined with a custom encoder. To achieve all this, I had to write software for different embedded boards, design multiple custom PCBs, and also ended up building a torque test rig. If you want to find out how all of this came together, stick around to the end of this video. Let's start off by thanking PCBWay for supporting the making of this video by providing manufacturing services. This allowed me to get those super thin 0.2mm printed circuit board stators, which I ended up stacking together to achieve the desired torque. Their shipping times already allowed for very rapid iterations on previous designs and are one of the many reasons why I can highly recommend their services for electronics prototyping. But let's get back to the actual design, for which I am using a lot of 3D printed parts. These have been designed to fit into my Voron's 10x10cm print bed and are printed from ABS. Since the PCB stators tend to run on the hotter side and the enclosed case does not allow for airflow, this ended up being the right choice. As you might be familiar with from previous videos, I tend to utilize heat set inserts for their ease of use and easy mechanical integration. For the stator, I used high strength neodymium magnets. They are fixed to the 3D printed part using glue and arranged in an alternating pattern around the threaded shaft. Now let's take a look at the assembly process of the motor. We start out with the case including a bearing and the first half of the PCB stator. Afterwards, the rotor is inserted and fastened using a 3D printed nut. In the next step, we add the second stator half. Here, the polarity has to be matched with the first half. For a better viewing experience, the motor faces, which directly attach to the PCBs, are not part of this assembly. Now, the encoder mount is attached to the case using three M4 screws. This completes the case assembly. Next, we disassemble the transmitting side of the optical encoder you might be familiar with from an earlier episode. This will provide the infrared light source for the encoder disk to be properly illuminated. The next part added is the encoder disk, featuring an 8-bit grey code pattern. This allows for error corrections and absolute position identification. At this step, it's also good practice to test the assembly, because friction due to tolerances or failures of motor phases can be easily mitigated at this stage. As a last step, the receiver is attached, completing the encoder assembly and therefore the entire actuator. Normally, of course, transmitter and receiver would have to be electrically connected as well. Since the assembly is complete now, it's time for testing. First some simple rotations, then position control and some step commands which seem to be working fine. Here we are already operating in closed loop mode. Next, it's time to build a closed loop test stand. It's utilizing a small 100 gram load cell placed at a distance of 40 mm from the actuator's origin of rotation. After an initial calibration, the load cell should be able to create a somewhat accurate torque reading.
With the small lever arm, the actuator can create a force of about 19 gram. This is equal to a torque of 7.4 millinewton meter or 0.74 newton centimeters. That's roughly 2% of the torque a typical 3D printer stepper motor creates. That's it for now, thanks for watching. If you want to see all of the design details, subscribe to my channel and watch the previous videos on custom optical encoders and PCB motors. And please leave a comment suggesting future video ideas and improvements on the current design. Also, have fun building your very own weak motor.